All right, and that's it for sport and on family matters tonight. We are doing it differently. Remember, I will. I told you that we'll be having a look at what exactly happens at an ideal isolation and treatment centers. And of course, keep talking to us and tell us what you think. And there's someone who's asking what are some of the challenges that they go through. And we'll have to wait and listen to what the COVID-19 patients go through. And of course, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, quarantine wasn't such a dreaded word. Despite the inconveniences of seclusion, it has, however, become synonymous with a scourge more so because of the crucial role it plays in curbing the spread of the coronavirus. Now, the treatment for those infected. We, Channel One, were able to access one of the few COVID-19 isolation and treatment centers in the country and gives you first-hand experiences of both patients and doctors in the grip of the pandemic. Just watch and tell us what you think about these patients of COVID-19, the trauma they have to go through and what should be done actually to help them in this journey. Take a look. Kenyatta University Referral Hospital is Kenya's main COVID-19 treatment center. We are here to find out the capacity of this facility, especially on the ICU beds, the bed capacity, and the oxygen, whether it's available at the same time. Do we have enough PPEs for the healthcare providers here? So join us even as we speak with a few recoveries of COVID-19 and those still positive for the disease. At the hospital currently, it's a 650-bed uh, hospital, opened uh, last year, October, um, and then this year in March, it was declared a COVID treatment and isolation uh, unit. Furthermore, the facility has a new 60-bed infectious unit block, the hospital's new COVID-19 isolation and treatment center, ready to address a rise in COVID-19 cases. So far, we've managed to see more than uh, 300 patients have gone through uh, our hospital. Um, as an isolation unit, we were referred because uh, one, being a level six, we are able, all our patients that are admitted here have access to oxygen supply. So we're able to, if any patient requires oxygen, we're able to give them. Uh, it's also a facility that has a 24-bed ICU. Um, where we're able to admit the critically ill patients. And if need be, we're able to even increase this capacity. We also have, um, uh, so, so we're admitting mostly, majority of our patients are adults that we admit in this facility. We're able to admit up to 450 patients in this facility. Besides the bed capacity, the facility is well equipped with oxygen supply on each bed. So it's a really tight. Then we'll have at least two patients. Yeah, two patients. Yeah. And we are thinking maybe we can design it. Yeah. We've also expanded our capacity where we've uh, constructed a, a 60 bed unit with uh, six ICU beds. This will also help us in case the numbers uh, continue to rise as, we are, as we've been seeing in the recent past. Um, so as I speak right now, we are continuing to prepare and get more and more uh, staff on board as well because uh, the care of these patients also requires uh, well-trained nurses, well-trained doctors, and actually all cadres to take care of the patients. Currently, we have uh, enough uh, health care providers. The management and also through the ministry, we've uh, managed to get more doctors and more nurses and we continue to hire as the numbers continue to increase. The gas plant is a cornerstone in recovery of patients here. With the capacity to produce between 400 and 600 liters of oxygen per minute, it can cater for a surplus of 2,000 patients. Uh, we have an oxygen plant, uh, four units, and one unit produces four to 600 liters per minute. Uh, in a day, you can calculate that to 7,200 liters. And, uh, at all the time we use one plant at a time. In case the plant fails when uh, uh, someone is not looking or uh, not checking on it, 
we have a backup plan of uh, manifold that supplies to the hospital. So the consumer, that is the patient, will ever not notice that uh, there's low shortage of oxygen. Oxygen plant have four units. One, the first unit is uh, uh, the compressor. The compressor is responsible for taking air from the atmosphere and uh, compresses it to uh, the next unit, which is the dryer. The dryer is responsible for drying the air uh, that is uh, to the room temperature, that is uh, lowering the temperature and drying it free from air water droplets. It takes it to the next unit, which is the air reservoir, and the air reservoir is where we have just air, which is uh, uh, contained there. Ready to go to the next unit, which is the generator, where we have a PSA um, generator. This generator is the one that have uh, zeroids. Zeroids are responsible for uh, holding all the other gases and letting the oxygen pass through. Most health facilities in the country lack such a plant and hence resort to purchase the precious commodity from other manufacturers. Currently, there are about 200 COVID-19 patients and those attending to them are allowed entry. been doing a good job. We've had uh, 134 recoveries f uh, since uh, the first uh, positive patients that we admitted. Our journey to the wards therefore began with the donning, a process involving wearing protective gears, PPEs. Lead covers Boots, masks. Googles. Then this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Face shields and gowns. Care must be taken, and slight exposure could put you in danger of contracting the virus. Those who work here have mastered the routine. Patients who have recovered from COVID-19 here after testing negative at least twice have been separated from those still living with the disease. We are cohorting our patients in terms of uh, the, the, the length of hospital stay and uh, whether positive or negative. So once we receive a positive patient, we place them in a particular ward where you find that uh, we admit patients in the span of one to two days. One to two days, they're placed in one particular ward such that we don't, uh, we don't mix a patient who has been here for a month with a patient who is newly diagnosed. That makes it easy for us to prevent reinfection and all that. A cheerful Juma, not his real name, a COVID-19 recovered patient, welcomes us to his bed. I landed on 25th, Mwezi Watatu, from Dubai. I was working in a cruise ship, yeah. So when I came on 25th, to Lichkulio to Kapeleko at KMTC, where I was quarantined there for more than 21 days. But for the first 14 days, tuliangaliwa pale tukaka. After 14 days, tukapimwa. The first test, I turned negative. Nashukuru ilikuwa vizuri. But for that time, kuna wenzetu kama wanine walikuwa mepatikana tukiwa hapo quarantine. Ikabidi tukongezewa zengine 14 days. So kwa zile mo, the second 14 days, ndo mimi nikapatikana positive. The isolation and treatment offered during his 45 days stay at this facility has cleared him of COVID-19 related symptoms after undergoing two tests. Wakani zungumzisha, wakani ambia, it's normal, kwa vile inategeme pia na damu yako venye hiko, symptoms maybe zineza kuwa kuna, lakini bado ukona hiyo, COVID kwa kumuili yako. Nika sama, it's okay, no problem. Nika kafu more than, for more 10 days again, 
nikapimwa tena kupimwa nikapatikana negative kupatikana negative you, when you get the first negative you wait for 24 hours whereby unapimwa tena for the second negative so the second negative siku bahatika tena nikapatikana tena positive naona sasa kupatikana positive ikabidi tena i wait for more than for nikae tena for 7 days more nipimwe tena it's okay for me nilikuwa nataka i want my health to be good nataka pia nene nyumbani nikiwa msalama so sina shida ikabidi nivumilie tena so nashukuru Mungu after those 10 days saa hii ndo nikapatikana negative ya kwanza nikapimwa tena ya pili after 24 hours nikapatikana negative so i thank god i'm good now i'm just waiting to go home his neighbor in this ward happens to be his contact who also tested positive for coronavirus after him i mean nilipopatikana kwamba kuna mmoja wetu alikuwa nini positive na mimi nilikuwa contact basi tukatengwa watu 13 tukaenda Karen tulivomaliza siku kumi kule tukapingwa siku ya kumi ndo nikapatikana niko positive but thanks to doctors here he's also a confirmed recovered patient sija kuwa na symptoms ila saa zingine unasikia kidogo kichefchevu hivyo but ile matibabu tunapewa hapa nao kutegemea kulengana na vile wametusaidia nasema hata mwili wangu sasa hii naona uko uko sawa sawa kabisa however this middle aged woman whom we name Joan who hails from Nairobi's Kawangware area has a different story currently struggling with high blood pressure for her it has been a two month battle with covid-19 one day i got uh, a phone call from ministry of health and they told me that uh, i came into contact with a person with covid since that time they traced me then they came in my house they did the test then after the test the following day they came and picked us they picked me my daughter and my cousin when we came here, we were brought uh, to the ward. We waited for 14 days. We were tested, we retested again. We turned positive again. Then we waited for seven days. My daughter turned negative. She went home. Then after that, the experience is the same. After seven days, you, I, have turning, I have been turning positive for so many times. I think I have around five, five to six times here. Yeah. The first symptoms I experience is uh, I was not smelling anything. I was not testing. I, I, I didn't have the test. My throat, I had something blocking here. And it was scratchy. So it sometimes I could cough. Eh? Headache. Then I could feel the joints. It's like I've been digging somehow. I, I was very tired. Nyambura has been here for two months now and having tested positive six times, she'll be forced to continue staying here until she gets well. A hope is that her next test turns negative for the sake of a six-month-old baby who is at home. The story of the three is a picture of the pain and agony this contagion has subjected those infected. I feel bad. I feel like I'm not going to be better. Not recovering is stress. I've been through a lot of stress. Eh? Call, knowing that my daughter, she, my daughter, she's not sucking, she's not breastfeeding. My husband, she's not at work at all. Sometimes they call me, they tell me my daughter, she's sick. Sometimes a lot of stress, I can't even tell you. This thing is real. For me, nimetoka inje, nimetoka kanti za inje, I've been to Italy, so nimeona hii kitu ni real, mwesikia. So for me, what I can, advise, I can advise the people outside there, tafadhali, mjitolia tu mpimu, it's good to know your health, mwesikia. Pia wale watu naishi nao, pia utaishi nao vizuri. The visit would not end without another process of the removal of the gear called Dauphin. It is done to prevent us from contaminating others in case we or our gear could have picked the virus from the wards. I went first, and everybody else I was with in the wards, our equipment too. Currently, there is no treatment or cure for COVID-19 disease. Governments are therefore urging their citizens to adhere to guidelines on COVID-19 prevention, such as use of masks, keeping one meter distance, and staying at home where necessary.
Purity Museo Channel 1 News at the Kenyatta University Referral Hospital in Nairobi County. Right, and that's what we had prepared for you tonight on Family Matters KBC. Of course, what exactly happens inside an isolation and treatment center for COVID-19, a new disease that nobody seemed to understand the cure or the vaccine, but nations are trying to really avoid and uh, isolate those who have the virus to just avoid spread of this COVID-19. There are a few isolation centers in the country and every county has tried to set up one and that is the whole process of getting into an isolation center and actually there is a separation in for every hospital, there is a separation of an isolation center for COVID-19 and treatment of other illnesses so that's why you don't have to fear going to hospital for any kind of treatment let me quickly go through your feedback um, who okay on twitter opio polycopio saying this life of no gatherings and football curfew it's boring and let's who again was watching family matters um right at maseno you're saying you're watching channel one weekend and of course family matters kbc and then we had in the battle, you're saying you are watching and a very inspiring story from the COVID-19 patients. Nanjero, you are also watching Channel One Weekend. And then Silas and Jura, you're saying we are at tough times during this pandemic and flood and COVID-19 has led to loss of many lives. I urge the government to airlift uh, those affected with floods and help those vulnerable during this pandemic. Edgar Eliroth, you are watching. Uh, Sunday night news from Mikindani, Kwamanzia. That's where you're watching from. Kamali, you also saying it's so sad to see people suffering and yet we are being told about BBI, right? And lastly, on Twitter, uh, Edgar Eliroth, you're saying you're watching touching stories from COVID-19 patients right there at KU and also a sad story from Tana River County. May the county and the national government take immediate action. Let me go to Facebook. Those who are streaming live, thank you so much for your company. At Anne Joy, you were watching Channel One Weekend and, co and, and Family Matters on COVID-19 Isolation Center. Now I understand and believe there is corona in the country. Indeed, there is corona not just in the country, but all over the world. Adibu Moses, thanks. I'm tuned in from Babadogo. Julius, watching from Malindi, Ganda, and James Maura, you are watching from Kayole. Watching from Thika, Joseph Kaboy, and Anne Waitira, you're saying such inspiring story. I didn't imagine that the pain people go through. May the Lord be with the lady who has a six-month-old baby at home, of course, wishing her the very best. Isaac Kipchumba, watching from Eldoret. Thank you so much for watching Channel One Weekend this night, and most importantly, our segment on Family Matters. It's been great having you company. Of course, tomorrow holiday, Madaraka Day, do enjoy yourself, and of course, stay at home, stay safe, wash your hands, put on that mask if you have to go out. I am Purity Musel, Lenza Odingo has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Do have yourself a peaceful night and God bless.